يَقُولُ آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do you guys think out of your mind that you will be saying, I believe, and you will not be tested? Allah is telling you that. You will be left alone saying, I believe, and no, don't test. Am, subhanAllah, Allah subhanAllah says, every moment of your life is a test. Every single moment. Either khair, goodness that would come up to you and you would be thankful, or shar that you should be patient this towards. Is, this is the point. The number, point number two, okay? There are only two. Allah will test you and will, because He will judge you according to your actions and sayings in this life and not according to His previous knowledge of you. One more time, one more time, very important. Allah tests you so He can judge you according to your actions and sayings, not according to His previous knowledge about you. You can go on the day of judgment, had there be no life, meet Allah, and Allah says, sorry, you're going to hell. You're like, whoa, come on, not, that's not fair, that's not fair. You didn't try me, you didn't test me. So to avoid these kind of sentences, Allah would give them the life and they would live life. Then Allah subhanahu if that person keeps absorbing the heart, will turn into black. Kalkuzi mujakhiya. That's the prophet words. Kalkuzi mujakhiya. You know what does that mean? It's like a heart that becomes so dark, so rigid, so rough. And the prophet says, Imagine the heart, it's already dark and black and horrible. It's placed into a cup, and the cup is put, put, put upside down on a plate. Then the Prophet said, لا يعرف معروفة. You tell them anything that is good, they ignore you, don't even hear you. A sincere hand is extended to that person, let me help you out. You look like you're in trouble, you look like you're in love and deeply in love, they're about to go into zina, let me help you out. In that zone, halas, they just absorbed every fitna. Wala yunkir munkara. Not just they don't take any good, any advice. They do not see anything wrong. And I'm sure you know people like that. Come on. The second reason why it's so dangerous is because due to its abundance, it's everywhere. Fitna right now, it's everywhere. It's just unbelievable. You walk from one class to other class, section to another section. You walk, you pick up your books, the girl right beside you, she's wearing whatever she's wearing. You walk, I'm like, hey Majid, how are you doing today? A'udhu billah min shaitan rajeem. And then she comes, another one opens her locker, like a'udhu billah. And then you want to lower your gaze. And then you see a poster on the floor. Come on, night dance, high school dance, whatever, holy names. Come on. And then you walk like, A'udhu Billah. And then another fitna comes, Salat al-Duhr. Huh? How's that fitna? Salat al-Duhr. Are you going to skip the Salah to go for a class and then Asr is going to come and you miss the Duhr completely? Another fitna comes. Are you thankful that Allah has made you patient? Because fitna and good and bad. And as you walk, are you thankful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And you think you'll enter paradise just like that? وَلَمْ يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And you will not face what the people in the past have faced. مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا They faced sicknesses, poverty, calamities, and they were shaken. وَزُلْزِلُوا Out of tests and trials. You think you will just say, I believe and enter Jannah? You think you will just go with life so smoothly? And you will go to Jannah where you have a mansion, where you go around and all kind of food is around. You will go to Jannah and you will never ever in your life be sad or depressed. You will go to Jannah and enjoy every beautiful scene around you, not just like the one in Vancouver, but Jannah. You think you will go to Jannah where in that place you will never be sick, you will never sneeze except beauty. You will never have any sweat, and if you had sweat, it would have fitna. And do you know that each and every single one of us is a fitna to the other person? You are a fitna to me, and I'm a fitna to you. We're a test and tribulation to one another. How is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, SubhanAllah. Brother Tab, why do we have to go through trials and tribulations? I said, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. 
I said there's no deity worthy of worship except Allah and Prophet Muhammad is his slave and final messenger. Why should we go through trials and tribulations? There are two reasons. Before I mention the two reasons, I want to tap you in the shoulder, not in the face. Is there any doctor that would make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year without going through any kind of MCATs, PCATs, DATs, chemistry, biology, whatever class where he or she has to be examined and take tests? Can anyone join the basketball team or the soccer team without going through some tests and tryouts? Can anyone take their driver license without taking a driving test? And now, when so the Prophet said, I'm not worried. I'm not worried that you guys will be poor. And I'm not worried about that. I'm worried that the dunya will open its doors for you. And money will flow. Just like how it flew to the people in the past. And they were racing towards that money until they were competing with one another until they got destroyed. That's what I'm worried about. The Prophet Allah is worried about money and, the and, young and, the old. and Allah knows, Wallahi Allah knows that our age, the tests and tribulations are so much and so hard. Allah knows. That's why now you understand when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Rasulullah that amongst the people will be under the shade of the throne of Allah when there's no shade except his shade, when the sun is only one mile away from your head and people are sweating to their nose, to their eyes, to their mouth, to their knees and some people are drowning from their sweat. Who is under the shade? Young beautiful people like you that maintain their iman and deen during this age. وَشَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي طَاعَةِ اللَّهِ A young boy or a girl that was raised solid to the deen. And how beautiful it is to find people like that. And Wallahi, if it wasn't for this, and out of all the dunya, he specified one thing you guys need to watch out for. وَاتَّقُوا النِّسَاءَ Women. Out of everything in this life, the Prophet said, وَاتَّقُوا النِّسَاءَ And similarly, the women should watch out from the opposite gender. And, for, and by the way, the fitna that you girls have towards us is way beyond your imagination. I'm serious, it's like, it's like qiyamah, when we go to Jannah, inshallah, all of us, and then you see like the chart, how the fitna affects us, you're like, wow! I never knew I wasn't so ugly. And you were like, Subhan I, I really made that guy go nuts? Oh my God! Yes, you have the capabilities, and that's a fitna. So use it in the best of ways, brothers and sisters. Not a single person in this room, not a single person in this room except that they are beautiful. I want you to know that. Wallahi, not a single one of you guys is ugly. Can you stop thinking like that? Am I so ugly? Especially the girls, like just please, like quit it. Let's like repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you really think this matches? Do I look ugly? I do I look fat? Yeah, don't worry. The, some of the scholars have said, and they look the fitna of men to women. They said the fitna which the men receive from the women is that they feel a lot of what? Uh, let's say blunt, sexual stuff, right? Just sexually, lust, I just want to touch her, just this and that. The woman fitna which she receives from the guy is that she wants to be the center of attention. She wants every guy in class to think she's the most beautiful girl in the world. That's the fitna. Like, oh, does he like me? Type, okay, check, next. Oh, brother, ah, yeah, him, him. Okay, what does he like, green, blue, or whatever, you know what I mean? And that's the fitna of women, they just want to have the spotlight. And the man is like, bro, anyone, just like, just come, khalas, yeah, and that's it, just one person is enough for me. Subhanallah. Reason. So they can be tested, so Allah can differentiate, can know the believer, the truthful, from the? Liar. You know how now the goldsmith would bring the gold into the hot oven and the pure will be clear and the impurities will drop and he has differentiated between the noble metals and the non-noble metals? Allah would test us so we can be clear and apparent not just to Allah and the angels but to the public. Very clear example. What is happening in Syria right now? 
what happening is a great fitna. And the Prophet told us a time will come where the people, the ones, the enemies of Islam will come and attack the Muslim. The Prophet said it with his own tongue. Going to the ears of the Sahaba, transmitted from their tongue and heart and memory all the way until this day in an authentic hadith, they will come and eat from you and you will take a bite just like how the people would gather under one plate, how rough they would be eating. The Sahaba said, Oh Allah, is it because we are few in number, or Rasulullah, is it because we are few in numbers and that's why they're beating us and bullying us? He said, No, 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 no. You guys will be large in numbers. But two issues they, they, these people will have at that time. The love of this dunya and the hate factor towards death. People will just Number one reason why fitna is very dangerous. Number one, because fitna is presented not to your eyes, not to your ears only, but to your heart. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Tu'aradu al-fitanu ala al-qulub Fitan are presented Tests and tribulations are presented to the heart To the heart And look what the Prophet uses the word You know that's the best word to be used Because that's revelation from Allah Just like you should be patient Two kinds of fitna Fitna to shahawat the fitna of worldly desires, dunya, money, opposite gender, status, high marks, society like uh, appreciation and like whatever it is, like reputation. And the other kind of fitna is fitna to ash, who knows? I gave you the first thing. Ash shubuhat. Subhanallah. The first fitna is desires, the other one is the ambiguous, unclear, doubtful things, specifically in Islam. We didn't mention in terms of survival. Exam is that Rasulullah told Mu'adh, Ya Mu'adh, Wallahi, I love you. Ah, this maha from the Prophet, Wallahi, I love you. He tells the brother and the sister when he meets you, Wallahi, inni uhibbuk. Ya, Wallahi, price tag, priceless. Mafi, mafi price. And he tells you, Wallahi, inni uhibbuki. Ya Allah. And he sees all the struggles which he went through in 2012 and 11 and 10 and the future. And he told Mu'adh, and Mu'adh, you know what he said? He said, Oh Rasulullah, I'll give up my mom and father for you because how much he loved them. Then the Prophet told him, Inni usika ya Mu'adh. I give you advice, O oh, Mu'adh. Will you guys take it? Mu'adh was a young man. You guys take it? He said, Ya Mu'adh, after every prayer, say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. Oh Allah, assist me in worshipping you correctly. A'inni ala dhikrika, mentioning you, and thanking you, and worshipping you correctly. Don't forget to say that after every prayer. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the happy one is the one that avoids the fitan. Inna sa'id laman junnib al fitan. He said it three times. The happy person is the one that is away from fitan. The happy person is the one that avoids fitan. The happy one is the one that moves away from the fitan. He tells you once, twice, and thrice, subhanAllah. May Allah make us amongst the one that are protected from the fitan. Ameen, Rabbil Alameen.